Now, for example 6, in this expansion, the coefficient of 1 over x to the power of 4t is given as um, this uh, monster-looking fraction here. And the constant term is, again, another monster-looking um, fraction. All right. Now, what we're supposed to do is uh, we're supposed to find a and find b. Okay, so this is going to be uh, quite a difficult question to do, okay, rather tedious, so, oh, well, please pay attention and bear with the length of this video, it's going to be pretty long, okay? So first of all, uh, first, what do we understand about co the constant term? Well, the constant term is obviously the term that is uh, x to the power of 0, which is the term independent of x, okay? So let's start this off by first finding the constant term. That means to find the term with x to the power 0. So in this case, what we have to do is we have to use the general formula. So because we have no idea uh, at which position is the term with x to the power of 0. If you seriously have no, no idea by looking at this, it's quite difficult to tell. All right. So well, we know that the term that we want will be 20c something, okay, 20cr. Okay, and of course, the first term is a x, second term is 1 over b x cube. Alright, now since this is r, this will be r. And since this is r, and this will be 20 minus r. Now what do we know? Well, we know that this term, we want it to be x to the power of 0. So obviously, not knowing what is r, we can't uh, really go simplify this term or any other term. All we can do is, of course, just pay attention to the power of x. So we'll erase everything else and just concentrate on x. So what we have here will be x to the power of 20 minus r. And of course, divided by x to the power of 3r is equal to x to the power of 0. So from here, we know that, you know, from the law of indices, that it is a division, so the power will minus each other. So there'll be 20 minus r minus 3r will be equal to 0. Okay, I hope you're still following along with me. So 4r will be equal to 20. So what this tells us is, of course, when r is, must be equal to 5. Now what this means is that well, when r is equal to 5, we will get the independent term, the term that's independent of x. So let's try. Let's put back r as 5 back into this term that we're interested in. Alright, shall we? So we have, well, 20c5, okay, and of course, ax, of course, uh, we have 1 over bx cube. Okay, so this is a 5, and of course, this term will be raised to the power of 5, and this term will be raised to the power of 15. So, uh, simplifying this, okay, of course, 20c5 is going to be a monstrous number, so we just leave it as this for now. So, 20c5, and just leave it alone, we have, of course, a to the power of 15. Right, and of course we have our x to the power of 15. So at the denominator, we can see that there is a corresponding x to the power of 15. So this x to the power of 15 and this x to the power of 15, we can solve each other. So we only have left with b to the power of 5 at the denominator. So this is the term, right, that we are looking for. This is the term that is independent of x. Now let us you know, next move on to find uh, this term that we want now. Okay, this term is of course um, x x to the power of negative 4t. Alright, now what we can do is we can recycle everything that we have done here because it will be the same general term, okay, the same general term for this same expansion. The only difference is that now I instead of Instead of me wanting the x to be power 0, I want the x to be power negative 4t. So what do I do? Well, I simply take this expression and equate to negative 4t instead of equating it to 0. So what we have will be, of course, 20 minus 4r is equal to negative 4t. So from here, we know that 4r is equal to 60. And therefore, r must be equal to 15. Okay? So what this tells us is obviously when r is equal to 15, uh, we will have x to the power of negative 4t. Alright, again, let's put it in and let's go figure out. So we know that, well, 20c15, alright, and of course uh, we have ax, and of course um, we have 1 over bx cubed. 
Alright, so this 1 over bx cubed will be power 15, and naturally, ax will be power 5. Alright, so let us again simplify this a little further. So 20c15 is again going to be a gigantic number that we're just going to leave it as it is for now. Okay, so um, 20c15. Uh, what we have here will be, of course, um, a, x, a to the power 5, and x to the power 5. Okay, now divided by, of course, this will be give us um, b to the power 15, and of course, x to the power of 45. Okay, because it's a 3 times 15, 45. So we know from here that this x5 and this x45 can cancel out each other, and this will be left with power 40, and this is precisely what we needed. So simplifying what we want, okay, we will get 20 c 15, right, and of course we have a power 5 over b power 15. So what do we know about this coefficient? Well, this coefficient is equal to 969 divided by 2048. Okay? Now, again, from uh, what we have here earlier on, this is the term that's independent of x. The term is itself, so this is equal to 969 divided by 2. So, now, we have to scroll a little lower. Okay, we're running out of space. Alright, let's take a look. So, by simplifying, okay, this equation, we will get 2 multiplied by 20c5 multiply by a to the power 15 is equal to 969b5. So far so good. It's just a cross multiply. It should be okay. Likewise here, if we were to go and cross multiply, this is what we will get. Okay, we will get 2046, 48 I mean. Right, multiply by 20c15 and of course, multiply by a raised to the power 5 is equal to 969 multiply by b to the power 15. So what we see here, okay, in front of us right now will be a pair of simultaneous equations. So there's two equations here with two unknowns. So do you think we can solve this? Well, actually, yes. Not much of a problem, really. So we shall call this equation 1, and we shall call this equation 2. And what we will do next is to take equation 1 divided by equation 2. So this is what we get, okay? Equation 1 divided by equation 2. Uh, we will get 2. Alright, 20c5. It's time to review this monster number, okay? Through your calculator, you will know that this is 15,504. Okay, like I said, a monster number indeed. Okay, uh, but just leave it. It's okay. You know, we we'll just leave it alone for now and continue with what we want to do. So this is equation one, and if we were to take equation one divided by equation two, we have two thousand forty-eight. Okay, and twenty C fifteen is another monster. So twenty C fifteen will give us also fifteen thousand five hundred and four. Hey, same. All right, doesn't matter. Okay, I mean you should notice that uh, your binomial coefficient actually uh, repeats. Okay, so uh, what we have on the right hand side will be nine six nine b to the power of fifteen. All right, so this division we will simplify. So this will cancel with this. We know this will be cancelling with this. We know and it's quite easy, isn't it? So this will cancel with this, and this will be left with power. 10. Okay, and what we have here is of course um, b power 5 cancel with b power 15, and again this will be left with power 10. So through the calculator again we know that 2, um, 2048 can be divided by 2, and when you cancel you're left with 1, 0, 2, 4. Okay? So simplifying what we have left, okay, what we do have we now a power 10 divided by 1, 0, 2, 4 is equal to 1 over b power 10. So cross multiply again to flatten this, we get ab raised to the power of 10 is equal to 1024. 
So you can use your calculator to root 10 for 1024. And some of you may even know that uh, 1024 is actually 2 to the power of 10. Alright, now either way, you can use a calculator to root 10 for 1024, you will get 2. Okay, so AB will then now be equal to 2. Alright, but this doesn't solve the problem because we are interested in the value of A and the value of B. So if you tell me A times B gives me 2, well, it, you're not really answering the question. Alright, but this is a very, very important thing to know. Well, because this gives us a very easy equation for us to work with. So we shall call this equation equation 3. Alright, so from what we know from this equation 3, is that, well, then now we know that A is equal to 2 divided by B. Okay? Now what we're going to do is we're going to substitute this identity, this equation that we just found out, okay, into equation 2. Right? Why? Because we know what is A here. So, well, we're going to substitute A is equal to 2 over B into equation 2. Alright, and this is what we will get. Okay, wait, I must show you the equation 2. So this is the equation 2. So we have 2, 0, 4, 8, multiplied by, of course, uh, this value we have already figured out that is 15,504. Okay, and a to the power of 5. So a to the power of 5 would mean that this is 2 over b raised to the power of 5, because this is a. And then, of course, this will be 9, 6, 9, power, b power 15. Now, what is left to do here is actually simply your calculator work. Okay, so you just press your calculator. Okay, work on the calculator a bit. Uh, it's going to be rather easy. Okay, I mean, just 2, 0, 4, 8, multiply by 15,000. 504 and of course 2 to the power of 5 is 32 alright so multiply all this together you get of course a, a big fat number alright obviously so now it is equal to 969 b to the power of 15 alright so this now what we're going to do is we're going to cross multiply so this big fat number that we have here okay we're going to divide by 969 Alright, so we do know that b to the power of 20 will be equal to 1048576. Whoa, just look at this. Okay, so b to the power of 20 is this number. Okay, work on the calculator. You, I'm sure you can get this. Okay, so from here, we will root 20 for both sides. Okay, so root 20 for both sides, we'll find out that b is equal to 2. Alright, now you can actually do this um, via calculator as well. Okay, so uh, just root 20 for both sides, we get b equals to 2. So now when b is equal to 2, uh, we know that, okay, by looking at equation 3 here. So obviously, well, a is equal to 2 over b, and now we, that we know that b is equal to 2, so a will be equal to 2 over 2, which is 1. So a is equal to 1, and b is equal to 2. Alright, 